Hello and welcome to the Moncast, where we compare Pokemon and Digimon. I'm Stevie, and as usual, I'm joined by Cheesite236. Hello! I am more in the future now. No, it should be further in the past. The clocks went back an hour, didn't I they? Went, no, we went forward. You went forward? Yes, we went forward in time. How? How does that work? We jumped forward an hour. Did you not jump back an hour? We did. We, we jumped back an hour in, um, uh, wait. No, wait. No, 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 you're right. I lost an hour. Wow, I'm dumb. You're time traveling the wrong way. Oh, wait, yeah, yeah, I am further back. Yeah, I'm stupid. No one said that. I did. Okay, you said that. Yeah, it's fall back, spring forward. That's in spring, we jump. The thing is, like, it's confusing because in time zone wise, we are further behind, but how it feels is that we gained an hour because, you know, at two it becomes one. So it's like we have an extra hour that day. But technically, yes, I am further behind. It was briefly like seven hours apart, and now we're eight hours apart. And no matter what, we'll always be tired when we record these. Yep, one of us has to be tired. Them's the rules. Them's the rules. The current score is 1816 to Digimon, and this time we're discussing the 35th episodes, Totodal Duel, and Cody Takes a Stand. I'm just going to say that Pokemon won now, so this is one of my favorite Pokemon episodes. I'm inclined to agree already. But still, as always, we recommend watching the episodes so that you're not completely lost as to what we're talking about. So let's start off with the Totodile Jewel. I just realised the narrator never brought up Goldenrod, did he? Nope. He never mentioned it. Nope. Yes. I'm so happy. Is that good? Yes, it's good. Is it? It's amazing because it means I didn't go into this episode immediately hating the show. Oh, because it's like, we're still not there yet. They didn't remind me and I just realised this is the first episode I've liked in ages. And they didn't remind me of Goldenrod, so that's all it took. Wow. I'm so easily influenced just by the narrator. Evidently. So yeah, this whole episode is taking a breather. Because they've been so busy. So busy with all the filler episodes. Yeah, all the nothing they've been doing. Yeah, all the nothing's very exhausting. I do a whole lot of nothing myself. It can be very, very tiring. This is a, another filler episode. Kinda. It's like, not really moving anywhere. But it does have some catches and an evolution. So, I think we can already say it's technically not filler. Yeah, technically. Let's just get that out of the way so I can put it on the spreadsheet. It's not filler because Ash gets the Totodile and Misty's Poliwag evolves to Poliwell. Yeah, an evolution and a new Pokemon. Two in one episode. What's going on? And for the first time in ages, this could actually pass for a Misty episode. Lord! Uh, yeah, I mean, I guess she is technically the focus, which is weird because she ends up losing. <laughs> She never gets the limelight, nah. ever. No, nah, she doesn't. She's always just the girl who tells off Brock for liking the girls, and she gets to battle and try and catch a Pokemon all in the same episode. Even Ash hardly ever gets to do that. I'm so happy. <laughs> this never happens. Yay, good job, Misty. You did it. Misty deserves a limelight. She's so much better than Ash in every way. Yeah, pretty much. In almost every visible way. And Ash cheated. I'm just throwing that out now. Well, I mean, Misty threw in some underhanded tactics also. Like, let's be fair. Yeah, because the way that they decided to battle over who got the total dial in the end was it just massively in Ash's favour. Yeah, but she agreed to it. If she thought it was unfair, she should have piped up. Well, you have a point. You can't agree to a bet and be like, well, it's not fair because I was at a disadvantage. It's like, you agreed to it. True. Okay, you got me there. But still, I don't like that Ash has another starter for his team full of starters and nothing but starters. Yeah, I was going to say, he gets all the starters in this generation, so... He got them all in last generation as well. Yeah. This is the last time that happens, though. I hope so, because his team's so boring. He has Pikachu, Cyndaquil, Chikorita, now Totodile, and Bulbasaur, I think. Oh, and ha Did he have hair? I forgot if he got Heracross back. He got rid of Heracross. Damn it, why did he get rid of Heracross? He doesn't have Squirtle anymore, he doesn't have Charizard anymore. He doesn't have Charizard anymore. He only had four Pokemon in his team, I think. Yeah, because they're all starters right now, and then 
uh, Pikachu, I guess, in some respects, is a starter. It's a starter in Pokemon Yellow, so I count it. And in, like, any Pokemon Mystery Dungeon game. It's not the only one, but... Oh, I see what you mean. Eh, I don't think we count it. Even though Mystery Dungeon is incredible and everyone should play it. I was, funnily enough, a Totodile. Should we talk about Totodile and how amazing it is? I feel like you should take this one since you clearly love Totodile even more than I do. Totodile is the best. It's a little alligator with a giant mouth. And this one in particular loves to dance. And that is just the cutest thing. He just hops around going <laughs> all the time. He's just adorable. And it's it's just cute. It's just cute. It likes to bite Jesse too, which is going to become a thing. Eh, I, I can handle that. I mean, it's pretty much the same as Victory Bell chewing down on James every time he pops up. That's, so. that's true, yeah. I can handle one repeated joke. Yeah, one new repeat joke. I mean, he basically traded out Hera Frost's nectar thing for... Jesse's hair. Yeah, now it's all about biting Jesse's hair. I mean, that's just better, though, because it involves Team Rocket, and Team Rocket are the best. You're right. You, you really, you're just pushing your luck. <laughs> For those of you just now tuning in, my now my new running uh, shtick is to just uh, try to upset Stevie's. And it's so easy. It is! Because I have so many opinions. Such opinion. Much opinion. Wow. Team Rocket is starting to get a little bit old. I will admit that. But they are still much better than Ash and Co. in every regard. So I will forgive any and all things bad about them. Because they will never be as bad as Ash and Co. Yes, that's true. Oh my god, if Team Rocket weren't there and it was just Ash and Co, the show would be so empty. There would be no joy ever again. Okay, well that's good. I don't want to think about it anymore, it makes me sad. I, Team Rocket, they're just, the good beans. They are good beans. They start the episode, and Meowth feels bad because they keep messing up and he's worried they're going to get fired, and Jesse and James were just like, oh, you've got to embrace your failures. It's just like, oh. They have such a healthy mentality towards messing up. They're so good. I mean, they kind of have to, because they have lost their minds by this point, if they didn't. Yeah, I also want to shout out Weezing and Arbok, the unsung heroes of the show. <laughs> they always give it 100%, even though they always lose. Just good on them. Keep trying. Keep going. Don't let your dreams be dreams. <laughs> One day you will catch Pikachu, if you just believe. If you just believe. Also, one of the best moments in the whole episode is when Wobbuffet pops up when Jesse and James are in disguise, so James just chucks them off screen. Yeet the Wobbuffet! Yeet the Wobbuffet. It's such a good episode, in general. It is really good. I just really like it because it's about catching a Pokemon, which hardly ever happens, mm -hmm. and like half of the whole episode is just straight up battling between Ash and Misty, which we never get battles that long. It's such a rarity, and it's so good when they do it. Mm -hmm. And they actually focus on battling and catching, which should be really important parts of Pokemon, but they'd hardly ever come up. Yeah, yeah, that's true. <laughs> Normally it's just random thing happening in, in Blank Town. And... Yeah, and then just token fight with Team Rocket at the end. Yeah. With some trap or whatever. But instead we get a whole episode dedicated to Totodile and Misty, and it's all so good. Mm -hmm. And it's pretty much, it's almost filler, but it's still so good. Why can't why isn't all filler this good? Because it's filler, and a lot of times people don't care about filler, so they don't try, and then filler ends up being bad, and yeah. It's a shame. Filler is bad, but this this is good because it isn't technically filler. Yes, it isn't technically. So what are you happier about? Are you happier about Poliwhirl or Totodile? I'm happier about Totodile. If Poliwhirl was becoming Politoed, I'd be happier about that, but uh, it's just Poly. I'm so happy about Totodile. I wonder if Politoed happens this season. Don't remember. I feel like Misty's Poly World uh, does become Politoed at some point, but I forget when. Let me Google it. I'm pretty sure it evolves, but I don't remember when. It's in the 247th episode of the anime. Dang. It evolves into Politoed. Do we reach that episode? No, I don't think we do. <laughs> oh, that's sad. But it does evolve, so that's neat, but that's not happening right now, so not neat. If this episode is still in the Johto region, then we don't get to see it, because it's before. It's like in the gap that we skip over to get to Hoenn. That's Gen 3, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, we won't cover it, yeah. That's a shame. That's what Pokemon gets for having so much dang filler. Yep, we just can't cover every episode and still have it be fair with Digimon, unfortunately. Because we'd still be in Johto by the time Digimon's finished. Yeah, sadly enough, yes. 
Oh well, maybe we'll see Polytoad in Gen three. Although they might get new, we might get new Co. Oh my god, it's such a <laughs> strange thought to have different people with Ash. We get the brilliant stylings of May and Max. <laughs> I know nothing about them. Anyway, we still have fifteen episodes before we reach that point and can finally move on. We're getting there though. Slowly but surely. Yeah. Chipping away. Chipping our way down, down. Watching fast. Fill a pass and we go. I don't know. And we're, we're hoeing bound. Hoeing bound. <laughs> I've still got notes for some reason on this episode. Why do I have so many notes? Not much happened. Totodile is amazing and that's about it. And it was really fun to watch Ash and Misty fight. Oh, I did want to call out Misty's dirty tactics, though. The first Pokemon she uses, they're using, like, knockout rules, like, best of three wins. Because Ash is obviously like, okay, you have a water Pokemon, so I'm going to use Pikachu. And Misty's like, oh, yeah, I have something to deal with Pikachu. I'm using Togepi. You know, the baby that can't fight. Like, Misty knows Pikachu would not attack Togepi. So Misty's just like, yeah, Togepi, go hug Pikachu. (laughs) It's such a power move, though. It's so good. It is, but it's terrible. <laughs> and it's dangerous, because if Pikachu didn't have a heart, like Blackwell Greymon, <laughs> then <laughs> Pikachu could have just murdered Togepi. But I think that only happens in the, the darker timeline, where Ash is a serious trainer. He's a serious trainer. He doesn't care about hurting the super rare Togepi. Is Togepi super rare? I think so. Togepi is a pretty rare Pokemon in Johto. Kanto, it didn't exist in Johto. It's like, yeah, it's rare. Wait, didn't she get Togepi in Kanto? So it can't be that rare, can it? What do you mean? I mean, she got one in Kanto. It was just an egg. Yeah, but Togepi is a Johto Pokemon. Then how did she have it in Kanto? Because they just did that. That's so weird. It is weird. Huh, but Togepi is the best battling Pokemon ever, apparently. Yeah, I don't know about that, but... <laughs> It defeats all of its opponents through cuteness. Yeah, it does. Gets them cute points. Could you imagine if she pulled that in, like, a Pokemon League final? Just sent out Togepi? And was like, yeah, go Togepi, kick his butt! And then, I don't know, the opponent has a Gyarados. And the Gyarados is just like, oh god, no! <laughs> it just goes, nom. Nom. <laughs> Swallows it whole. <laughs> and Missy's just there like, oh, but it worked last time, no. No, no Togepi eggs, Be- Benedict. And then Togepi just warp evolves straight to Togekiss inside the Gyarados. And it explodes. And boom. There, I've written an episode. This becomes Togekiss and kills everything. <laughs> we don't need Togetic anyway. That's why it warp evolves. <laughs> Togetic is not necessary. Togetic's lame. I'm glad people like Togekiss, because I remember like people thought Togekiss was really stupid. But I was like, oh my gosh, it's so cute. It's just a plain bird thing. It's a plain bird, like, dove. It's just a chubby bird, and it's so cute. It's a literal borb. <laughs> like, seeing Togekiss standing is so cute, because it just ha- it's all fluff. It's just a poof. Ah! <laughs> Isn't it cute? Ah! It's such a big ego. Big ego. Much ego. That is cute. It's got such little feet. It's hard to focus on the episode when so much of it's just like, we want to see what happens next now, because that was really good. Keep it up. <laughs> yeah, it's one of those things where it's like, not a lot happened, but it was still enjoyable. Yeah, it was really fun to watch, but there isn't much to cover in it. Okay, the last thing I'm going to say then is just that Team Rocket aren't stupid, because they did actually wait for the battle to finish before they attacked. Quality strategy there. Yes. Also, the battle was absolutely rigged in Ash's favour, just because they wanted Ash to have all three stars, and screw you writers. It's not rigged! Misty agreed to it! I know Misty agreed to it, but the writers forced her hand, because they have absolute control. They gave her Poliwhirl! Yeah, that's like a consolation prize. It is! It is absolutely a consolation prize. But Misty would have been a better trainer for Todile. I mean, yeah, she is the water trainer, so that makes sense. Plus, then we could have had, like, Misty sending out Totodile and Ash sending out Chikorita or Cyndaquil and have two stars on screen at the same time and have them both doing things. Instead, now it's still just, nope, Ash has all of the the main ones. Yeah. Misty doesn't matter. Nope. Brock is still just referee. Yep. Yep. The whole team dynamic does make me sad in the show that it's just Ash gets everything. And then Misty and Brock tag along. Pretty much, yeah. I mean, Ash is the protagonist main character. It's a kids show, so it's like, oh, we want to see more of Ash. Can they not trust kids to like more than one character at a time? At the time? No. 
The whole show would just be so much more interesting if Ash, Misty, and Brock all got a bit of the limelight and all contributed and did things. But kids want to pretend like they're that character. So if Ash has all the starters, then that's the coolest thing ever. Yeah, but it sucks. Yeah, from an adult, we are cultured standpoint. It just sucks to watch because you end up with two empty characters with nothing to do. Mm -hmm. And Ash. And Ash, yeah. Also an empty character with nothing to do. The whole Pokemon structure with the characters and the filler and everything is flawed and bad. But it can make fun episodes when it breaks the norm and actually does things with its characters. So basically it's good when it's not trying to be just bog standard Pokemon. <laughs> when they put the effort in, it's really good. And I think they did put a bit of effort into the episode this time. So I, I did really enjoy this one. But it does just highlight the fact that most episodes of Pokemon at the moment are very boring and bad. Yeah, I agree with that. They just gave us a glimpse of what could be. Mm -hmm. If every episode was like this. But I hope I hope this is the start of a streak of good episodes, please. I'd like that. Yeah, yeah, I hope so. I hope the rest of the episodes are fun and we eventually get to Goldenrod. I'm I'm just not thinking about Goldenrod anymore. It just makes me sad. But I have my fingers crossed. This is the start of something new. Should we move on to the Digimon? Sure. Let's move on to Cody takes the stand. And it's not a hat stand, even though he practically is one. <laughs> Why am I ripping into Cody? <laughs> oh yeah, because I don't particularly like him. So, for what feels like the 25th episode in a row, we start with them trying to save a Destiny Stone and failing. <laughs> but it's okay, because they, they actually tried something new. They buried it in snow to try and hide it from Blackwall Greymon, and it didn't work, but I don't care because they tried something other than just trying to defeat the mega-level Digimon that overpowers them all. Fair enough. They didn't throw themselves at it again. Kudos. Kudos to Davis, who came up with the plan. I don't understand why Magna Angemon couldn't have just done it. He's defeated Omega before, but you know. Because Black Cogremon cheated, we've been through this. He didn't cheat. Magna Angemon is just garbage. Okay, I guess I'm recording the rest of the episode by myself. Alright, good night, Stevie. Have fun with that. <laughs> good night. I'll just finish up. You get some sleep. Bye. <laughs> good job. So, yes, they failed to save a Destiny Stone. Black Cogremon says he only needs one more. But there's two left, so he's not good at counting. And then it goes back to the real world, because that's where we go. After things have all kicked off, they just chill in the real world. Mm -hmm. And TK is really intense, like, all the time at the moment. He just really, he really doesn't like the forces of darkness. For some reason. It's a conundrum for some reason. <laughs> it's so weird. It's like me hating the forces of good for hurting the forces of evil. Yeah. Like, who would have thought the, the guy with the crest of hope would hate the forces of despair? Hmm. <laughs> I don't know. TK's just weird. I don't know. I, I don't know what's normal about that. It's just weird. He's such a weird guy. Hmm. But anyway, my next note just says that Ken's mom is really sweet. Oh, yeah. They have a, well, there's supposed to be a group sleepover at Davis's, but only Ken comes. Yes, yes. That says a lot about the friendship with Davis. Yeah, no one really likes Davis. Ken was like, oh, okay, yeah, definitely I'll come over, and no one's there. Both Yoli and Kari say that they would come, and then they don't. So, just girls, am I right? Girls. Just to clarify, I'm kidding. I'm not sexist, okay? <laughs> I am. <laughs> girls are the worst. <laughs> I am not the bad thing. Come on, Stevie, be sexist with me. No. <laughs> But yeah, Ken's mom just celebrating that he's going to a sleepover at a friend's house is so adorable. Ken's mom is so good. Absolutely. And then Ken and Davis don't really do much for the rest of the episode. Davis has one joke about wanting to have lunch with Tentamon for some reason. He feels bad that he missed out on lunch with Tentamon. You know, Tentamon. Everyone loves that Tentamon. I do kind of love the idea of Tentamon being super popular and everyone just wanting lunch with him. <laughs> everyone just wants to have tea with Tentamon. Ah, oh, I love that. That would be so good. But yeah, the rest of the episode focuses mostly on Cody, which is surprising in an episode called Cody Takes a Stand. Right. <laughs> it is a definitely a Cody episode with a, a, a hint of TK on the side. Yeah, for reasons. Yeah, because a lot of the Cody stuff is him trying to figure out TK. N no, I mean, like, never mind. No, go on. Uh, never mind. Spoilers. Oh, okay. I hope your spoilers aren't just TK and Cody get the DNA Digivolve, because I know that. Well, you know, I don't know if you wanted to spoil that for people listening. 
I don't know. I don't know the rules of this. I'm assuming that everyone watching has at least some prior knowledge of the shows. Probably. But yeah, I just meant like, it's basically just, we need a thing for them to do. We need them to bond. We need them to have an issue so that way they can overcome the issue and friends again, you know, we made them not friends. I mean, Cody doesn't really have an issue with TK. He just doesn't understand him yet. Fair enough. And this episode's about him just figuring out why TK feels bad and hates evil. I wonder why TK would hate evil. I can't put my finger on why TK would hate evil things. It's a mystery. It's almost like he's a good person. Yeah. And also, his hamster was murdered by the forces of evil. His hamster was murdered by a devil, yes. That's such a a character development backstory. Just like TK became this way because his hamster was murdered by the forces of evil. Yep. His hamster that can resurrect, by the way. That sounds like a great backstory for some superhero character. <laughs> Just like he wakes up one morning, <laughs> finds that his hamster's died and shoots. This must be the forces of darkness's work. Only the forces of evil could hurt such an innocent hamster. So Cody, instead of asking TK directly about his backstory with the forces of darkness, goes to his brother and speaks to Matt. It's odd. It's odd. But it's also pretty smart because like Matt has no reason to like hide anything from Cody really. About TK. Aside from Cody weirdly like looking for private information from, from Matt instead of going to TK. He wasn't looking for private information. He was just asking like, why does TK get so angry at evil? And then Matt was like, oh, because Patamon was murdered at that one time. But he wasn't murdered because Patamon came back to life immediately. Okay, if they die and then they come back, they were still murdered. Yeah, but the concept of murder becomes invalid. That that's like saying that Jesus Jesus was definitely killed. Okay, that's different. And then he came. He back. wasn't still a tangible thing. Like TK had the egg. <laughs> and Jamon is just Jesus. Jamon's an Jesus. angel. <laughs> but he came back after like three episodes, just like Jesus came back after three days. I mean, if you have an egg, you technically came back sooner. In fact, it was even three episodes. It was like one episode for the egg to hatch. I feel like, yeah. I feel like Poyomon came back like instantly. So actually, it's better than Jesus. Better than He beat Jesus' respawn time. <laughs> I didn't I didn't make that joke up, by the way. That's from Team Four Star. <laughs> Just want to point that out before someone gets upset with me. <laughs> okay, so yeah. Cody and Matt have this whole conversation, and... It basically just serves to make every viewer in the world really jealous that they don't get their own Digimon. Why is that? I felt like they were gloating about how like they have this special bond with their partner Digimon. It's just like, oh, we don't get that because we live in the real world. That's so unfair. I mean, you have a bond with Peko. Peko can't talk and become a giant hamster that fights things. How do you know, Stevie? How do you know? Have you asked Peko? Many, many times. <laughs> She's never responded with plain English. Yeah, it did make me feel sad, because I was like, oh, we don't get Digimon. Damn it, real world. Damn you. Just sucks. Damn you. No Digimon for us. I feel like they were just being sweet, not gloating. Yeah, they were being sweet. I'm just salty because I don't get a real life Patamon, so. You want a real patty. It'd be so good though, wouldn't it? Yeah, it would. Although I feel like people would be immediately concerned about my choice. (laughs) <laughs> They'd be like, you chose the, the vampire bat? Like, yeah, what's wrong with that? I mean, he'd be a pretty good vampire bat thing, though. Better than actual vampire bats. What else is there left to cover this episode? Uh, stuff. We're still talking about Cody, because Cody... Is Cody. Yeah, Cody takes a stand. Kind of, I guess. He does. He stands in front of the Destiny Zone and just says, Hey, you want to destroy the stone? You gotta destroy me as well. That's true. And this is like the first thing to really cause Black God Greenwell to stop at his tracks for a bit. Much better than the, the other plan of just work together by all attacking at once, which is the, the default plan. Because that's the digi-destined way <coughs> to get... <coughs> I mean, that wasn't a team <coughs> decision, that was just Cody. What are you coughing for? They're awful. Wait, are you saying that they're just trying to make Cody seem like TK? No, I'm just saying they always sacrifice the youngest because why not? No. <laughs> they do. They always put the littlest one in the most danger. No. Yes. Just because they've done that with everyone else doesn't mean <laughs> that they always do it. 
<laughs> just because they've done it every other time. I mean, TK was fine. TK was never in danger against Devimon, really. He almost died! What are you talking about? No, TK was, TK was like, unharmed. Yes, afterwards. And everyone was in equal danger then. So you can't really say it was just TK in danger. Yeah, but T- yeah, but the T- I mean, it, it was mainly TK because Devimon had this prophecy in his head that was like, "Oh, the youngest will defeat me." Yeah, which came from literally nowhere. Now I think about it. Yeah, because the season wasn't actually meant to go as long as it ended up going. Uh, hmm. And the other youngest is what Kari. Kari, yeah. And Kari's just plot special. Actually, yeah, the kids are, like, either the stupidest, the bravest, or the other kids are just idiots, because, like, TK almost gets sacrificed to Devimon, Kari literally gets held hostage by Phantomon with a scythe to her neck, and Myotismon, like, like, choking Godomon. What, so you think Cody's jealous that he didn't get his moment to be the youngest one in danger, so he stepped up and made the moment himself? I'm saying that everyone else is a c- role model. <laughs> Cody's like, as the youngest, I have to be in the most danger to matter. This is the only way I get screen time. <laughs> it's kind of true, though. I have to be in danger. Uh, it works, kind of. He almost gets murdered, which would be a bad ending. <laughs> I just realized TK and Kari both got their angel evolutions due to almost dying. It's just like a consolation prize. <laughs> It's a consolation, but you didn't die, so here's an angel. <laughs> here's a literal angel, since you didn't die. It's the guardian angel. Cody doesn't get a guardian angel this episode. Instead, he just gets, like, swept out the way as Black Greyman destroys another Destiny Stone. So now I think there's only one left. I guess. <laughs> we'll find out. If they say it's the last one the next episode, because the next episode is definitely going to be them destroying another stone, then, yeah, we'll find out. Yeah, so there's definitely only one left, I think. I definitely think that there's only one left. I I definitely think we're gonna find out, I guess. I wonder if Black Cold Greymon's gonna cheat again to destroy the last one. He didn't cheat. Magna he cheated this time. Magna Angemon needed to try harder. He cheated against Magna Angemon, and this time he cheated by splitting the ocean and defying the laws of physics. There are no physics in the digital world. You know that's not true, because they'd all just be floating all over the place. There's only simulations of physics. Well, in that case, he cheated by pausing the simulation of the water physics. What if that's just his ability? What if he can just do that? Then that's broken. It is. Broke while Greymon. It is a little broken. But I'm I'm glad to see that they almost held him off, because that was really close. They had a whole army of underwater Digimon holding him off. Yeah, yeah. And it it worked for a bit, and then he just went, no, screw this, I'm just going to use my attacks again. Like he probably should have been doing the whole time. Yeah, and then he cheated and split the ocean. So, I still don't think that was cheating. I just think it's like, hey, I can do this. Might as well. I also think trying to murder one of the Digidestin is cheating. Okay, so the evil Digimon aren't allowed to kill the kids anymore? Like, what the heck's the point then? Well, no one else has particularly tried. I mean, Ario Kenimon did. Mummymon did. Really, though? Yeah. Has anyone actually tried to kill them? Because they would be dead. No, they tried shooting at them and fighting them and they didn't, couldn't do it. I don't know. I think there's some villains codes that you know actually allowed to win. It's bull. Absolute and utter bull. You can't be a villain if you plan to win. <laughs> Them's the rules in kids shows. Literally my Otis one. Last thing to bring up. We did get Black Cole Graham on reminiscing about the flower. That was a shot of the pink flower swaying in the wind. Yes. Wanting to start again. <laughs> Wanting to start again. Black Cole Graham on has a heart and thinks about the flower. We've done the flower special already, so I don't want to talk, dwell on it too much. But it looks like a pretty real flower to me. <laughs> so, was this episode filler or not filler? It was something. True. I would say not filler. Mm-hmm. Because Cody learns a lot about TK and takes a stance on Blackwell Greymon having a heart. And now we know that Cody doesn't want to fight Blackwell Greymon, which is interesting. Yeah. Because, I mean, fighting him wasn't working anyway, so we might as well not fight him. I think it's weird that, like, Cody's the one that's, like, not wanting to fight Black War Raymond, but he was so <laughs> about Ken. He's just like, oh no, it's like, no, Ken's the worst. But Black War Raymond might have a heart. It's like, I mean, Ken wasn't fabricated from literal evil control spires. Yeah, exactly. I see now. <laughs> yeah, if anything was going to be evil with 
with no need for like a second thought, it'd be the thing that was literally just created from an evil object, not the actual human being. He does have a weird way of thinking through things. Hmm, huh? does. A bit slow. But he is like eight years old. Fair, but also flawed. Yeah, he's still not the greatest character. He's pretty bland most of the time, but I think this episode does do a lot to redeem him. You can be wrong. I thought this episode was good. No, I This is the first good Cody episode we've had in a while because it wasn't actually about Joe. Or is he? <laughs> it was about Cody. That was kind of weird. So yeah, I liked it. I enjoyed the episode a lot. And it's the first, at least what I would say, is the first decent Destiny Stone episode we've had. Yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll give it that. I can't think of any other particularly good Destiny Stone episodes. They're all kind of good. Yeah, this one is less garbage. Glad we agree on that. <laughs> Nice. Awesome. Moving on. Now it's time for Mono A Mono, where we attempt to compare these trivial things by arguing with each other. <laughs> and then making special episodes out of them, because why not? Eh, only when it's, like, super funny to me to make a special about it, because it's so insignificant, really. I feel like we should make an episode about why Magna Angemon is the worst. Um, I feel like we shouldn't. I feel like we should. No, we really shouldn't. I feel like we really should. Nah, I'm not feeling it. I'm just saying that we could fill an episode with why it's not good. Who is your Monster of the Week? My Monster of the Week is... Drumroll. Totodile. I'm not surprised. <laughs> because Totodile is a uh, Totodile and uh, is the best and is super cute and is just the best. Yeah. And also sounds like Donald Duck. <laughs> it is just Donald Duck, though. It kind of is, yeah. It's that kind of voice, just no actual words. Like from Totodile. I can't do a Donald Duck impression, so I'm not even going to try. Oh, I can't either. But, you know, it's fun to try. So, Totodile is your pick. Cool. I was close between picking Totodile and, like, Black or Greymon. But there was one shot where Patamon's trying to make a sandcastle, and it's really bad, but he's so happy. So... Patamon is my monster of the week. Yeah, of course. He, he's trying to make a sand castle. It's just a sand lump, but he's so proud of it, and I love Always him. Always the blatant favoritism. Yes, I'm not even going to deny it, but it's so cute. Just look, look for the shot of Patamon with the sand castle, and you'll understand. No, I know, but still, like, or... yeah. it was very cute. <laughs> okay, which protagonist was our least favorite? I, I don't know. I feel bad for Davis. So, uh, I'll say Ash. Yeah, I've got Ash, and also Ash. That's, that's all I've got written down, it's just Ash. <laughs> Ash, 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 Ash. 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 Ash, because he's the main protagonist, and I don't like that. He won, but he got Totodile. He got Totodile, even though it should have been Misty. Okay, think about it this way, though. At least somebody got Totodile. It wasn't like Totodile was a random, oh, actually, that's my Pokemon, and... I'm so glad you found it, or something like that. That's true. There was a capture that's always good, but Misty should have had the Totodile. Then Misty needs to go to Professor Elm and get one. Ash didn't have to go to Professor Elm and get one. Well, if Misty wants Totodile so bad, she's going to have to. I'm I'm just going to say it again. Ash sucks. <laughs> sucks. It, it never changes. You're so mad about this. Just everything about Ash. He has such a bad track record. <laughs> well, at least we can look forward to Totodile using water gun and bite mm-hmm. 12 million times. Yeah. I really hope at one point Ash just says, like, use water attack. Use water attack. Probably. I hope. I hope, because that would be so dumb, and I'd find that so funny if he does that. Anyway, Ash was definitely worse, in my opinion. Mm Mm-hmm. Because Davis didn't really do anything bad at all. Yeah. In fact, he tried to do something good. Like, he tried to arrange the group sleepover. He had the idea of hiding the Destiny Stone in snow, which was something new to try, which rarely happens. So, good. It's all good. Good stuff from Davis. And Ash was Ash. So, yeah, we're docking Ash another point. So, who are our favorite people, though? Who did we like? Ah, uh, Misty. Uh, I actually thought it was really sweet how, like, uh, when Polly World evolved, Misty actually stopped caring about Totodile because she was like, oh, I have a Polly Poly World that evolved just to help me. Like, I'm, I've got the best Pokemon already. Yeah, that was cute. That was really cute. So, I like that. I think that's sweet. Yeah, Polly World is good. And he also says, like, Polly World. Polly World. Polly World. Polly World. Polly World. Polly World is just a 
a buff tadpole. It's pretty cool. It's not even the biggest buff tadpole. No, he gets more buff. He can. He's not going to, but he can. Mm, that would be cool, though. Just Misty with a polyrath. That would be kind of cool, yeah. I would like that. But yeah, my favorite person was Cody. This will be the only time I pick Cody as my favorite person. <laughs> I can pretty much guarantee that, because this is the only episode where he's actually been good. Wow. Ouch. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I can't think of another episode where I've liked Cody particularly. So, yeah, good going. More of that stuff. Good for you, Cody. You're, you were decent by Stevie's standards. Yeah, he was challenging the norm. And good. You did good, Cody. Keep it up. Nice. Which storyline did we like more? I don't know. I, I kind of liked Pokemon more, actually. Interesting. I just thought it was fun. It was fun. It was also kind of bog standard. Oh yeah, it was. But I'm getting kind of sick of the Destiny Tones stuff, so it just feels really boring. I get that. I felt Digimon mixed up enough with the changes in approach, because they tried hiding the first one, and then they tried setting up a whole like army around the second one. So I felt that was different enough to just, we'll find Black Gold Greybon and fight him before he gets there. So I like that they're trying different approaches to defending them, even if they are still failing. Right, we gotta find a way to hide it, or could be covert about it. Or we need to outnumber him. Stuff like that. Plus, I just enjoyed the bits with Cody trying to find out more about TK and why he is an angry man. So, personally, I preferred Digimon storyline, but Pokemon was still fun with its simple plot as well. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, I could go either way. Which is kind of where I stand on the points as well, because I enjoyed both of the episodes a lot. Uh huh. So, I I have no idea which one I want to give the point to. I don't know. I don't know. Okay, okay. How about I'm going to flip a coin. Heads, it's Digimon. Tails, it's Pokemon. No, flipping a coin is bad. We've never resorted to that before. I'm doing it! No. Is Neobu awake? Yes. Go ask Neobu to be the decider. But he didn't watch the episodes. See, if he preferred an episode where Ash gets a Totodile over an episode where Cody stands up to Black or Greymon. Yeah. Do you prefer an episode where Ash and Misty fought over a Totodile and Ash got a Totodile, or an episode where Black War Greymon is destroying Destiny Stones and Cody stands up to him to be a literal meat shield? I prefer the Pokemon. Sounds like Pokemon. Sounds like Pokemon. <laughs> Our neutral third party has decided. I, I enjoyed both the episodes a lot, so I'm, I'm happy to give Pokemon the point. I mean, they did catching and the battling in the same episode, so that's a rarity, and it should be rewarded. <laughs> he was in no way bribed, by the way. I did not. No, he just describes Cody's act as being a literal meat shield. <laughs> that's what he was. He was a meat shield. He held himself hostage. Wow. Just Cody is a human shield for the Destiny Stone. Yep. The episodes. Yep. <laughs> Interesting. But that does make the score then 1817 to Digimon. So Pokemon is bringing it back around mm -hmm. again. Nice, nice. Digimon had a streak of four episodes one in a row. Not bad, not bad. Decent going. It's not as good as Pokemon's streak earlier in the series where it had six episodes in a row that it won. But I'm hoping, because both these episodes were good, that they stay at this quality for at least a little bit. <laughs> please. Yes, yes, please. Next time we'll be discussing the 36th episodes, Hot Matches for Pokemon, and Stone Soup for Digimon. Both of those sound promising. <laughs> huh. If you want to talk about today's episodes, you can reach us on Twitter and in the Moncast Discord, and you can support the show via Patreon to gain access to the Moncast Uncut for just $2 a month. And of course, a massive thank you to Cheatside for joining me today and staying awake for far too long. Where can the people find you? In Sleepy Land. I'll link Sleepy Land in the show notes below. And thank you so much for listening. Until next time, bye bye. Bye bye. bye, -bye. The flower is alive. It's dead. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to run to the bathroom real fast, and then I'll be right back, okay? Okay. okay. Just don't take the mic with you. <laughs> we don't need to hear it. Why? Okay. <laughs> Why would I do that? <laughs> Just making sure. Stevie, are you okay? No. Oh, well. <laughs> I had four hours sleep, remember?
Yeah, maybe you should uh, I, do something. This is this is a sleep deprived recording, so expect bad things. It's always a sleep deprived recording on one of our hands, to be fair. True. More so for me this time. Yeah. The Stevie Tide. Okay, go. Huh? Go. Go to the bathroom. Go, go, go. Digimon, yay! Go to Digimon. Di- 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 Digimon. Da, 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 Digimon. Here we go. Here we go. Oh, 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 oh. So what's up, superstar? Let's Here we go, go pa. Pa. Hey, look, it's one hey, guy. Hey, what's up, one guy? Right, 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 right. It's on the girl. You're gonna, gonna change, change the, the world. world. So everything's a crazy. Man, it is hazy. <laughs> Yeah. Okay, we should probably finish the episode because I'm getting tired. <laughs> Never stopping. Never stopping. Okay, okay, hold on. I'm going to peel back the curtain a little bit because that was just the worst. Stevie started this episode by saying, we're not talking about the flower. The flower came up this episode. We're not talking about the flower. And then, of course, they throw in, by the way, the flower is actually alive. They forced me to not be able to talk about it, and they were like, oh, I'm totally right, by the way. And what's funny is, I get to edit out you claiming I did any of those things.